cord. I have this old computer cord here. I'm just going to use this, cut this end off, strip it, and wire nut it on to the appropriate wires. And that should power my transformer. And there we have our wires. Let's see, this looks to be about 18 gauge wire, so I'll use this one. Well, it's been a bit of a pain, but I routed the AC cable through here and wired it up the way that they said. This ground still has to go on the ground lug, but I want to bring my 24 volt DC connections from this out, and I'm going to bring them out through this, uh, this little knockout. And uh, since I don't have the proper strain reliefs, I'm just going to pry these slightly open, shove them through, and then force it most of the way shut again. And now it's time to hook the ground up. And that should be good enough. To pry this back shut a little bit. Snap the lid back on. And there we go. I have my 24 volt DC power supply. You might have something a little handier than this, but this is what I had. So now time to hook it up to my meter. This thing is built uh, just like any thermostat, two halves that snap together. So really I just have to mount it to this and then pop this right on top. And this part is very easy. I have two terminals here, positive and a negative. And it looks like it says that AC plus should go here. So I'll put that in here. And minus in this one. So now I have it hooked up, I route the wires out of the hole down here, and all I have to do is snap the actual meter back on top of the connections here. Not sure which side snaps on first, but we'll find out. And I think I'll probably tape or glue it or something to here eventually, uh, just so I have something solid to mount it to, but it should be ready to go. All right, here goes. I'm going to plug in my transformer. Now, what I paid for this is less than one third of what it would cost me to get a standalone sensor. So I'm saving $100 at least here um, over buying something else, hopefully. If I plug this in and it fries, then I saved nothing. And it looks like it sort of works. I don't know how long it takes this thing to actually warm up, so let me get the manual now that I have it all hooked up. So oh, let's see what this thing says. Hmm. After a one minute warm up, the sensor will stabilize and output the current CO2 readings. So I guess I'll give it a minute and see what it does. The specifications on this, in case someone is interested, is here. I think you'll be able to see that on video. 
I'm not going to go through them all, but in case anybody is interested, that is what this sensor can do. Most of these are in the range of 0 to 2000 ppm, and I'm really curious where my house is going to stand, because as I mentioned, it's a pretty well sealed house. Well, it's been more than a minute, and you can see that it's 800. Now, there's only one person in this house, and I've been gone most of the day. I've also run my dryer for a few hours today, so this is about as well ventilated as this place gets. 800 is pretty high. Um, let me breathe on it here and see how sensitive it is. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, it's fairly sensitive. Alright, good. And I was curious about this. This is only rated to go to 2000 ppm, but I was really hoping that it would go to 10,000 because 10,000 ppm is 1%, and that's a much more useful range than just up to 2,000. I don't know how accurate this thing actually is at those upper ranges, but it is really good to know that it does go up to 9999, and let's see what happens if it actually reaches 9999. Okay, it just maxes out there. That's fine. But uh, this is just a quick video here showing you my carbon dioxide meter. And uh, we'll see what happens when this thing goes back down, but um, I'm not going to really cover what the safe levels are in this video or how to use this, but I will be using this meter as well as my carbon monoxide meter and a few other tools in the future to describe safety in terms of emergency heating, emergency cooking, and other such events. I have uh, a few things arriving in the mail yet, so I can't record or show those yet, but I just thought this would be an interesting little project, and it's important to note that if you're going to be doing any sort of emergency heating especially, you really need to be mindful of both oxygen and carbon dioxide. So I'm going to be doing some tests, and I'll share those with you in the future, on what really constitutes a safe use of a cooker or uh, like a burner stove or a kerosene heater for example or the little propane heater. And uh, you know what? I'm going to do one quick test just so that I don't leave everybody hanging. Hold on a minute. And here's the little test I'm going to run. I'm in my bathroom, the smallest room in my house if you don't count the closets, and I'm going to have this meter sitting here. It's stabilized at a little over 800, which is apparently what my house is. And on the floor, I have this propane heater. This is a 3000 BTU propane heater. And uh, as I mentioned, I really like this heater. It's pretty nice. But uh, I am going to light this thing up. There it goes. Took a while to light that time for some reason. And I'm just going to let this thing uh, let this thing go. It is a catalytic heater, so carbon monoxide should remain at zero. I'll put the meter in here just to make sure. But I'm going to let this thing run for a little bit, make sure that my uh, vents don't turn on, shut the bathroom door, and see what it does to the carbon dioxide level. All right, it's been running for about five minutes. Let's uh, quick slip into the bathroom. And it's definitely warmer in here. This heater is putting out uh, a pretty good amount of heat. So I'll turn that off. Probably have to turn my air conditioner on now. But uh, anyway, that's not really the point of this video. So let's see what the meter says. Hmm, 1,284 got to be careful not to breathe on it because humans are a very potent source of carbon dioxide. 
And of course my carbon monoxide meter is at zero, just like I expected. Now, if I keep the camera here, this will probably keep rising for a while. It has a rather slow response rate. So I'm just going to uh, stay in the room here and see what happens to the meter. And as the carbon dioxide reading continues to rise, I'm going to mention a few things about carbon dioxide and oxygen that a lot of people probably don't know. Uh, for one, your body does not regulate the amount of oxygen in your blood. It really doesn't care. It doesn't regulate the oxygen whatsoever. That's why carbon monoxide is so dangerous and why low oxygen levels are dangerous. Because your body doesn't regulate that. What it regulates is the amount of carbon dioxide in your blood. Now, it can adjust to high levels of carbon dioxide and low levels of oxygen. This process is the same process that allows you to acclimate to different altitudes. Again, it has to do with the partial pressure of these different gases. But, <clears throat> but your body regulates the amount of carbon dioxide in your blood. So when the concentration of carbon dioxide gets high, you feel like you're short of breath. You have to breathe a lot faster. Uh, you can actually get into a, an acidosis situation where your blood turns acidic. That can eventually damage organs and such. Uh, but uh, this sort of level here isn't really all that dangerous. Uh, it, to be realistic, anything below 10,000 ppm, unless you're in it for a very long time, isn't going to be all that dangerous. I, I'm not going to give exact thresholds here because of liability reasons, but I have my own in mind. But uh, typically, 2,000 is as high as you want to go in an indoor environment. If you're in it continuously, they say that 1,000 ppm is about as high as you want to be and still maintain a good level of comfort. Sometimes if you're asthmatic or such, uh, you need to keep it below 1,000, but I don't have those problems. And uh, I know that I can certainly be in this environment indefinitely without any issues. But I just wanted to demonstrate here that... Uh, the meter seems to work, so I'm happy with it. It goes up to 10,000, which is 1%. And I'm not going to talk too much about how to use it, or what levels are safe, or that sort of thing in this video. This was just showing my meter, uh, how I put it together, and uh, a few little details along with it. And uh, I just showed you here what happens when you put it in a room for five minutes with the heater. It goes way up, and as I mentioned, 2,000 is as high as you really ever want in an indoor environment. Uh, typically, that's why this meter is only calibrated up to 2,000, and you can see that it very quickly rises to that level, so you do have to be careful when it comes to uh, any sort of direct combustion uh, product indoors. So, this is Neural Nar, and uh, this is my carbon dioxide meter project. Thanks for watching. And in the future, I'm going to have some more videos, at least I have more videos planned, on different combustion devices, heaters and such, and what using them does to different levels of carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide indoors, and that sort of thing. But I have to wait until it's cold outside to do that, because it's not cold. It was over 80 degrees today. Unusual for this time of year, here in uh, early September, but rather it's uh, late September. Uh, which is rather unusual for this part of the country, but I don't have to worry. I know it's going to get cold soon enough, and then I can get to those videos.